This is the Bad Batch Podcast on TV Podcast Industries, and we're talking about Season 2, Episode 10, Retrieval. They really treat you like you're one of them. I wish Marco did that. Doesn't seem like he cares about any of you. Why don't you leave? <laughs> you're wrong. Marco's kept us in business. He said with more time and more digging, we're bound to reach better Ipsium soon. Besides, I can't leave. This is my home. It's what I know. I get it. Our ship is our home. It's the only one we really have. I'm uh, sorry I stole it. Here. You can have my rations. Why? Why would you give this to me? For helping us. Welcome back, fellow baddies and batchers. This is TV Podcast Industries, and we're talking about The Bad Batch, Season 2, Episode 10, Retrieval. I am one of your retrieval specialists, Chris. I'm one of your other hosts, Derek. Hello there, fellow batchers. I am one of your retrieving retrievers. <laughs> John. <laughs> that, that comes across really weirdly in audio medium, John. But I bet I like it might it. do. <laughs> I like it. He's alluding to being a dog. Yes. yes. Oh, it's better than cocking a leg. That's I true. Guess. That's true. Yes, it is better than that, John. Yes, it is. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about the benefits of being a dog or not. We are here to talk about the retrieval of the batch from the unknown planet mm. and what happens on the way. Top thoughts quickly. Yeah. I like this better than last week's episode. Uh, there was a bit more movement um, in this sure. episode, and I kind of liked the um, the overarching storyline in here. But we'll definitely get into it as we get into our spoiler-filled discussion about episode 10. Yeah, I think I'm the same as well. Definitely enjoyed it uh, more so than um, last week's episode, mm-hmm. although whether that's just relative, I don't know. I enjoyed Benny as a character as well. I could mm-hmm. see uh, Benny coming back uh, at some point yeah. for sure. Potential love interest for Omega? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Bad guy? You know, maybe she likes bad guys. We will find out in the future. Yes. I, I, I'm with you guys. Again, everything is relative, so pretty much better than last week. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll, let's get into the spoiler-filled discussion of it, because I think the devil's in the details on this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so, first off, before we get into the synopsis... Derek, do you want to tell us who gave us what with this episode of The Bad Batch? Absolutely, yes. Uh, executive producers for the show are, as always, Dave Filoni <laughs> and Jennifer Corbett. Uh, this episode was written by Moses Zamora. Um, he recently created and wrote the TV show Selena for Netflix about the late American Tejano singer Selena Perez, uh, which is really interesting. interesting. Yeah, and now he's uh, doing his first episode of The Bad Batch. Uh, and this episode was directed by Stuart Lee once again. Uh, and the story editor for the show, of course, is Matt Miktovitz. John. <laughs> Do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis for The Bad Batch Season 2, Episode 10, Retrieval? Sure. The Bad Batch, trying to speed their departure from the arid mining planet, start to fix an old speeder. At the same time, Amiga, still fixated on the stolen Marauder, has the idea to track their droid, Gonky, on board the ship. She locates Gonky 100 clicks away at another mining settlement, and the group head off on the repaired speeder to get their ship back. They locate Gonki with the thief, called Benny, but not the Marauder. Benny tells them it is impounded by his boss, Moko, at the Ipsium mine, and is being stripped of its parts. The Bad Batch infiltrates the mine, bringing Benny along. Finding the Marauder, Wrecker, Hunter and Tech begin fixing the hyperdrive and other systems, while Benny and Omega head off to disable the ray shield, preventing them from leaving. In the mess hall, they swipe the access code, but just as they're about to leave, Moko arrives, informing them of the ongoing difficulties at the mine. While there to announce the top owner for the month, who gets extra food rations, he also informs his workers that they must work harder for less. Benny is disappointed not to get top owner, after stealing the marauder for Moko. Amiga and Benny obtain the codes to disable the ray shield, but also finds data that shows the mine is making a good profit, which she shares with Benny. But Benny has already ratted them out to Moko in an attempt to further impress his boss, and he captures Amiga. 
Moku tries to stop the Bad Batch using Omega as a bargaining chip. Held over the molten ore, Hunter must rescue Omega. Elsewhere, as Moko's workers and robots surround Wrecker and Tech, Benny reveals Moko's deception to everyone. Turning on their boss, Moko stumbles, falling into the molten ore. With the Marauder back with the Bad Batch, they prepare to leave the planet. Benny stays at the mine now that the profits will be equally shared, and Amiga realises that there are other evils out in the galaxy besides the newly formed Galactic Republic. I am very upset with the writers here. Why? They did not use the very easy Moco Loco <laughs> for a bitch. He goes, oh no, Moco's gone loco! <laughs> like, just, it could have been funny. Could like, been. literally, that's what this needed. Yeah. It could have been Cafe Moco. Oh yeah, Cafe Moco Loco. Ooh, ooh. That's actually could just be a drink. <laughs> Give me a Moco Loco with extra sprinkles. Maybe. Mm. Anyway. Let's get into our blaster points for this episode, because I do want to talk to you guys about it. First off, blaster point number one. Yes. So, Gonky has a use, again, for the first time this season. Yeah. Um, yeah. First time in the series, I think. (laughs) Probably. He he did do something last season, I think. I think he did. I I think he gonked last season. He did. I think he was primarily there for gonking. Mm Mm-hmm. Which is a fair use. Like, it's a good thing. <laughs> he's, a, he's a walking battery power pack, as uh, yeah. as he's called by Benny here. In yes. The episode, basically. But, uh, but yeah, he's nice to have around, and, and they seem to like him as well. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I was pleased Gonkey got his moment to shine, mm-hmm. even though he didn't know it himself. Because yeah. uh, actually, it was Amiga's <laughs> shining uh, by coming up with the idea mm-hmm. to, to track Gonky instead of the Marauder. Yeah, yep. absolutely. She's better tech than tech. Exactly. Well, she thinks <laughs> thinks outside of the box more than tech does, I suppose, sure. is, is the thing. They, he, he said the uh, the uh, way of tracking the Marauder wasn't now available and couldn't think of another way to do it. So, again, uh, you know, as we, as we mentioned in last week's episode, again, it's Omega showing um, that she does have abilities that are complementary to the rest of the Bat Batch and has uh, has a way of fitting in with them and a way of doing yeah. things they don't think about. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm guessing with the events of the last episode, they were too preoccupied with that because ultimately, I guess they've just had a multi-million credit ship stolen from them mm-hmm. and it's like, ah, we'll get another. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> unless it's like kind of a Ford Fiesta, I guess, <laughs> in, in the oh my God. galaxy... You know, in t- in terms of cost, mm. you know, they can get a sort of a, a loan out, I guess. <laughs> well, it, like it looks really good to us because we don't even have a starship. We have to be jealous of theirs. Uh, but maybe it is a very cheap ship. It could be yeah. <laughs> cheap. That would be definitely a wood way. I'd be like, be like, ah, sure, we'll just buy another. We'll be fine. Like, <laughs> what about the insurance? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um. So I, I look. Th- this was fun. This was showing again how Omega is. Like you say, she she thinks outside the box and she has some other skills. It's also that she is learning from the rest of the batch. She's becoming like an amalgamation of Wrecker's kind of humility and kind of what makes Wrecker Wrecker. Hunter mm. being the leader, she's learning about leading and strength and thing. And she's learning tech from tech. She She's thinking outside the box and learning how to track mm-hmm. Gunky and kind of use that to bring to find the ship yeah or tracking from hunter yes yeah, so that would probably well it's not tracking <laughs> hunter yeah, yeah okay fair point fair point got me on that one uh, damn. but look it's very much what it says on this this overall story is pretty kind of by the numbers a, a little bit a little bit again I, I think the actual overarching story itself is is actually much more interesting than how the bad batch deal with it but i do think it's interesting here that it's omega is the one that finds them they're yeah. very lucky here that the thief who stole the uh, ship with a hyperdrive that could get them to any planet in the galaxy decided to move it to another spaceport on the planet itself i presume <laughs> they wouldn't have been able to find gonky if they Jump to hyperspace. Um, yes. I don't think he would broadcast that far. So luckily, it was only a hundred clicks away uh, to to where they were going to. So uh, that was that was really lucky, but a good a, a good thought to at least try and track. Yeah, I, I I did like them all heading off on this fairly dilapidated mm. yet repaired speeder, which is kind of like mm. 
chugging out sort of fumes from the back yeah, um, looking slightly off balance as well so mm. i like that um i don't think it was it was meant to carry four people on no it uh, certainly wasn't so and i mean with wrecker the size that he he is i guess the the center of balance was fairly off kilter yeah, yeah. Um, but i like when they get to this mine and, and settlement that there's that moment with benny as well you mm-hmm. know yeah uh, just yeah. with with gonk being there because Benny has brought the um the the marauder to his boss to Marco yeah to yeah. Marco you know mm-hmm. yeah and yeah I also like the reaction from Tech when uh, Omega po- poses this as an option you know oh poor Gonky he's aboard the marauder and Tech's gonna go oh no there's another thing that she's missing now <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like is she going to start talking about her teddy bear next that she's missing <laughs> but she's going no no it's a way to track Gonky so uh, she's she is thinking about other stuff but uh, yes at least they go and retrieve uh, Gonky as well. Yeah, and then getting to where Moko is, uh, like where the, the the Marauder is, leads us to the kind of second sub storyline, if you want to call it that, of this episode. So our blaster point number two. <laughs> freeing the minor miners. Yes, yes, absolutely. This is a this I think is a much better story and this is why i like this episode much more than last week because the story is again the galaxy is a very dangerous place for people to live in not just because of the galactic empire because people are um taking over control of planets and systems that were controlled by other parties during the war and people that sided with in this case the tech guild um they've lost their leadership and the person that comes in and takes over is this person mako who's taking over and taking advantage of this group of kids, effectively. Yeah. Um, it seems like everybody here is really, really young. Um, Benny seems very young, and everybody else seems to be all young people living on this planet, and they're all being made to mine uh, on behalf of Marco. Um, I think this is an interesting story. Yeah. yeah so Benny's definitely. actually 53. <laughs> uh, Possibly. It's just, yeah. it's just the, the way those aliens look. They look like miners. Just like wonderful Grogu from The Mandalorian, who's 50 and looks like about two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It, it it's being so close to the I guess whatever the this or Ipsum gives off, they mm. they don't age. It keeps yeah. a perfectly a sort of smooth skin for them. But yeah, Moko or it actually kills all the adults with cancer. Maybe. Well, just, maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe you don't survive mining on this planet. But yeah. Moko is kind of their boss, come leader, um, and runs this whole town. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, you really get the sense that he doesn't really treat Benny particularly well. I mean, he's he's kind of impressed. He's brought the Marauder along, but he's now worried about how he'll sell it on in case someone's looking for it so talks and says it needs to be stripped effectively of parts yeah but this all seems to be doing for getting you know uh earner top earner of the month mm-hmm. salesman of the month getting their commission mm-hmm. um you know so i've worked jobs like this well exactly <laughs> so but yeah you get the sense that moko is not the most pleasant person yeah but no. he, he's leading by the carrot um for the most part he's kind of saying the right things he's explaining to them that well you know actually we're not getting the greatest quality of the ipsium um it's not giving the greatest uh, the greatest payback for us so if we all work together and you all work harder and i pay you less money then um we'll make a make a better profit out of it and maybe if you keep digging harder and faster you'll get to a deeper seam of the Zipsium and get better quality and maybe we can all make money together so he's almost talking in this communist terms of it's all about us as a planet exactly the way that they would expect but in fact he's just reaping more and more benefits and um he's the one that's like gorging himself on the food i mean exactly. there is that scene where i was like going wow this guy's hungry mm-hmm. um yeah. you know where, uh, whereas benny's begging for rations of water yeah on this desert planet effectively and yeah. and the top earners get an extra bowl of gruel and um, mm. you know a s- kind of slush uh food that that comes in yeah uh, so it's he's certainly creaming off what they're making mm-hmm. but it is that you know this mine is in trouble uh, i mean you even benny mentions that you know if we hadn't done what we had done and uh, you know followed moco uh this mine wouldn't still be running exactly yeah. yeah but as we find out later from uh when omega is there to get the codes for the ray shield 
uh, and and Benny is there that there's all this data showing actually the Ipsum is is clean, pure, mm. and is giving really good returns, yeah. which are being creamed off by Moco. Exactly. Yeah, and that like the the, the story is not unique. Like we we've seen these types of stories before in shows. Uh, like the, the, the gang leader selling off the, the stuff for profit, pocketing yeah. the profit, keeping people below. I think what is slightly different is the setting. Like the interesting part is like how the batch interfere being it's the batch mm-hmm. and just the, the Star Wars setting. We haven't seen that story, which is in countless other kind of TV shows in the Star Wars setting. So I do find it somewhat kept my attention. Mm hmm. I suppose that's a good way uh, of putting it. And it does lead to the ending where like, we we see that Moko is overthrown. Mm-hmm. And it leads then to Benny kind of taking a, I assumed, a more kind of leadership role. Uh, no, he kind of says that they will all continue mining together and everybody will get the shares equally. So they've gone to that communist ideal again right it's it's everybody <laughs> shares the workers all share in the work and all share in the in the money that they that they're going to make out of it you know and effectively moko was taking advantage of all of them but they're all going to now run the mine together because that's what they know this is their home and they deserve to reap the rewards yeah. for for their work effectively i guess yeah. it's like a cooperative uh yeah. you know say it's more waitrose isms uh, do or, sound much yeah. worse yeah it's more yeah. like Waitrose um, or the uh, John Lewis yeah. than maybe, you know, Tesco's. sort of communism circa <laughs> 1940s. Right. right. For me, it was just like, so So what, he's got, who's going to learn to do the books? Who's going to sell the stuff? Like, it was kind of like, you're all miners. You're, you're, you still need someone at the top sometimes to do the, the, the admin. Although, just, just put, if, if Moko had learned how to do that, I'm sure a member of, uh, of the crew true. could learn how to do that stuff. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I liked how, I mean, I, I like the feel of this. It, you know, mm-hmm. um, I, I kind of like the idea as well that Amiga just fitted in and there wasn't this sticking around. You know, she was in the mess hall where they're all having the food and mm-hmm. um, Benny shows his skills as a thief. Uh, swiping the access code, yeah. but she was fairly open and in broad daylight here, mm-hmm. really. And you know, consensus is something not quite right with this leader. You know, they're all, yeah. you, can, you know, she she can see that Moko is using his power and leverage over them to force them to do things for, um, you know, effectively just an extra bowl of food, yeah. which she says isn't right. Exactly. Um, it is exploitation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's that kind of interesting viewpoint, isn't it? I think, um, from kids where they just kind of say it as it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, even though Benny is also around her age, it's just, he's too involved. That's what he's been brought up on. Mm-hmm. But that outside perspective is like, but, He's using you effectively, yeah, so exactly. you know she can see that, um, and he, he's trying to wrap it in a in with up in a bow, yeah. but it it's not really. Um, it's pretty dire what you guys are having to do. You know, even yeah. Benny is he's, he's disappointed he doesn't get that top earner spot. It goes to the same guy that has got it for the last like number of mm. uh, times. You wonder, does he know about the arrangement that Mako has? Is that why he's yeah. getting it every yeah. month? Like, yeah. And <laughs> so, week, yeah. you know, and, and that's the thing. It's interesting then that he also steps up to mm-hmm. to call Moko out once Benny, you know, reveals this deception that Moko uh, is doing. So uh, th- this was all really good. The other side of this, I I did like the the moment of the Bad Batch with Benny uh, infiltrating into the mine down through the chimney that kind of purges every 60 seconds. Thought mm-hmm. that was kind of nice as, as well. Uh, certainly with the droid there for when Hunter went down, first of all. Absolutely. A nice little uh, nod to uh, Mission Impossible. Yeah. Um, That's exactly we, uh, what. <laughs> we had, uh, exactly. Hunter hanging from the roof and only two seconds to go before he's able to get out of there and the uh, the robot gets taken out behind him. Yeah. Real Mission Impossible at the moment. Very cool. I was expecting a droplet of sweat. Which should have been there given the, yeah, the heat yes yes absolutely <laughs> absolutely um anything else on the storyline from this episode that you want to talk about um but I, I liked how that all went down in the kind of big sort of pit mm. with all the molten 
all there as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it it was a good action piece again, was- sort of with Hunter having to sort of grapple his way, but I, I to to save Omega. But I like the fact that Omega is timing it. You know, she she gets thrown off, but holds on to the droids who then topples with her, mm-hmm. um, and the the timing. It's almost like she's timing it because she sees Hunter yes. sort of grappling uh, and flying through the air on the, with the the grapple line. Um, so I thought that was really good, and I just liked how you know again this Ipsium is really explosive, so it neutralizes Wrecker and Tech with their weapons, uh-huh. and but then how it, it it only seems really that the droids that Moko has can really protect him, and they get taken out quite yeah. quickly. Exactly. And yes. Not only does he lose the argument, he loses his grip and uh, plunges yeah. into the the molten ore below. Well, yeah, but he had an opportunity to be saved, and and uh, Benny did reach out to him to say, um, "I can save you here," and he wanted to take Benny down with him rather than yeah. be saved. But uh, that, is his, that is his big failure. There. It really but, is. But yeah, that scene with uh, with Amiga and um, and Hunter was great. Really enjoyed that. She seems really active in that moment. That trust that's there between yeah. the Bad Batch that um, she can take out one of the droids as well as be saved by Hunter. It was a, a really active moment for her. Really, really enjoyed that. Thought that was great. Yeah, great. So I'm going to move on to blast point number three. So I want to talk about the, the 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 last line of that John said in the synopsis, which is it reminds Omega that there is greater evils and other evils out in the galaxy outside of the newly formed Galactic Republic. Mm. Like there's still baddies there, yeah, and there's still bad things happening. So we we talked about this in our last episode that I thought they may be setting up people or the audience to prepare for new new members of the Bad Batch coming in. Mm. And we do see that here. Like, Omega directly asks Benny to come. And there was a split second I went, oh, they're going to bring the Thief on board. Right. Like, yeah. I thought they were going to add Benny to the roster. Yeah, me too. Um, and he was going to be, like, just, he's going to be a more sneaky member of the team. Mm-hmm. And that's their new, the Batch element. Um. And I still think they might be doing that. I still think they might be kind of gearing up for that in the future. I don't know when it will happen. Maybe in like late future where we'll get, like you said, Derek, in the last episode, in a live action, we see Omega in a bat uniform. Mm. In a, and then she takes off her helmet and there's another person who takes off Wrecker's helmet. It's not Wrecker, mm. but it's Wrecker's helmet. It's a big beefy alien kind of thing. Maybe. I think they're building up to this because they're reminding us yeah you've got all that problem going on with the empire the batch aren't going to be able to solve that mm-hmm. they can't stop the 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 newly formed republic becoming the empire we know the future is written they can be involved in kind of bits and pieces here and there in the revolution but there's also all the huts that they can do there's other bounty hunters that they can go after there's there's still atrocities and woe in the galactic yeah. universe yes as is that they could be involved in yes but also there's also a lot more people like the bad batch out there as well it's a two-part statement that's being made here it's not just that there's loads of bad people like the empire or like the Galactic republic out there it's that there are also lots and lots of good people out there like the bad batch i hated this line absolutely <laughs> hated it i must admit the reason why is because it feels like a cartoon ending. Um, this show has balanced a lot of times on the audience that's been there watching Clone Wars all the way through or now in their 20s, 30s and 40s who really like the show. And then sometimes it, it goes back to like Transformers and G.I. Joe from the 80s where it has this moment. Don't worry, everybody. There's bad guys out there and there's also good guys out there. What you, what I needed at this stage of the show, we're at episode 10 of a 16 episode season. And what I needed is them to go this is our mission, saving people like this in the galaxy. We should be banding together with other people to help planets like this that have been mm. exploited by other people. We've seen it with um, them going to Kashyyyk, falling into trouble and saving uh, the Wookiees there. We now see them on this unnamed mining planet, saving the mining miners from uh, from exploitation again. 
and they fall into these moments, but there's no active moment from this ca- from this cast of characters who are supposed to be our protagonist for the show. There's no moment where they're saying, this is what we should be doing. They're going back to a person who doesn't care about them at all, wouldn't even send someone to save them from this planet in Sid, and they're going to go and do another mission probably next week or the week after just to go and collect some more credits to keep themselves alive. But by this stage, a season and a half in, when one of their members has already gone off to help the universe they should be going maybe we should use our skills to help people um and it feels like they're not doing that nobody's doing that none of them are saying those lines is it because in the back room in the writer's room they don't want them to progress because that's what old cartoons in the 80s and 90s used to do keep them in the same um state all the time or is there another reason will we get that are they just trying to stretch out that storyline but i feel at this stage they've fallen into so many moments where they've saved people that they should have made the active decision to go out and save people from now on it would be great i think that would be a much better ending for this episode well that's it i mean it's like from season one they were being chased around and there was the yeah. active moment where they needed to raise money it's why they banded with sid in the first place mm-hmm. yeah. it's not to say that sid's relationship now with them goes on forevermore it's ultimately transactional you know whilst it is a cartoon they are still the adults in the room Mm -hmm. of this this group and should be picking up on the fact that tech hinted at it but it's saying you know we've got our money now we've stayed clear of the empire we Mm -hmm. need to find our own base and some way of funding us even if it's just going and doing sid's jobs every so often and just laying that on the line to her or connecting up with fee you know Mm -hmm. because she's that that's she's more reliable but again you know you've had fee come in here and we don't really know so i I mean i would agree with you i think it needs to be that decision to say this is what we're doing we still have the relationship with sid or if that's not going to work it's with fee or with someone else Mm. that can provide it because in a sense, it's a right statement, but it needs they need to do something about it. Yes. And that's kind of the the issue starting to come in with yeah. this series is it's being kept too discreet, the the whole thing. Yeah, and, and of course, next week's episode, they will probably be going back to Sid and they may confront her about this. But I just feel having that line there where nobody makes an active decision to say, actually, maybe we should be going out and trying to help other people and then go back to Sid and challenge her on the fact that she didn't save them. You know, yeah. I just felt the, the episode ended with, we're back in the status quo, bad people at the universe, and there's also good people like us. Right, bye. Yeah. <laughs> Roll credits. It really did just a little bit more. Yeah, I, I think you need to hit the nail on the proverbial head where I do believe it is going to be stretched for the next three episodes. And the final kind of, we, we, we have some of the, the names for the upcoming episodes mm-hmm. and the, the penultimate or the semi penultimate before the, the actual, the two part kind of finale is tipping point. Mm hmm. I literally think they're giving away the, the, what that is going to be about. That is, I think, the tipping point for the batch to be fully involved and much like kind of rebels and some of the clone wars where it became this, and you've talked about it, became these big sweeping three part arcs and mm-hmm. really involved in the storyline. I think that's hope. I'm hoping that's what that is. And they just needed to stretch this out a bit. And I think they'll, they'll sprinkle in over the next couple of episodes. Some, some disillusionment for the batch. Oh yeah, and get to get to that point. But you're right. It, it, I, I think it was very GI Joe. Mm-hmm. Like it is eighties yeah. cartoons. Go Joe. It's oh no, like they got away again. Mm-hmm. Oh well, let's move forward. I mean, even the next episode called Metamorphosis could be about the change happening in. The bad batch. That should be. Yeah. Um, it could be about the change and what they, you know, so as you say, to have this whole thing, but it's in the next episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there was this perfect moment to set up that mm-hmm. by saying it here, away from Sid, and then you're confronting Sid. Exactly. Um, and breaking out on their own, because as you say, their own member has done it. So yeah. it's not that they're unclear on this. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. 
But with all that said and done, gentlemen, do you have any notes before we start to wrap up our final thoughts on this episode? I've got one note. You, Go for it. There's a voice you may recognize in this episode who plays Benny. It's played by Yuri Lowenthal, who you probably spent about 30 or 40 hours on your PlayStation hanging around with. He's the voice of Peter Parker in the Spider-Man game uh, on PlayStation. So how cool is that? You miss swinging about with instead of hanging around. Ah, swinging that's around. true. Although he does hang around as well, Spider-Man. He does. Yeah. Yeah. He does whatever a spider can. <laughs> he does. He Excellent does. stuff. So yeah, I like cool. that. Yeah. As I say, how, knowing that that is the voice actor... I really do hope Benny comes back. As mm-hmm. I said it up yeah. front, it felt like there was that possibility, as you said, Chris. And I mean, yeah. I can see it happening. You know, yeah. being the same age uh, as Omega and that just filling out the ranks of yeah. um, yeah. of the Bad Batch again. Yeah. Um, he doesn't so, seem to want to leave his planet, but uh, but I like I like the idea that he's going to be uh, very wealthy uh, as, as a, a mining mogul uh, in future, as as the rest of his uh, planet are going to be as well. Yeah. But Omega has, you know, put a seed in there so that you mm. can do anything in this vast galaxy. Yeah. Uh, you don't yeah. have to just do this. Exactly. So the seed is planted with Benny, and mm-hmm. um, he may seek them out. Who knows? Absolutely. Absolutely. And he might bring the wealth. He may, yes, he may yeah. be the one to sponsor. Oh, that's the, the funding. Batch. He funds yeah. the batch. Yeah. There you go. He is their Charlie to the Angels. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yes. So gentlemen, let's get into our final thoughts for this episode. Derek, how do you feel with this one? As I said, better than the last episode. I do think there was an opportunity here to make it a really good episode itself with that final moment but actually it pulled the rug out of uh my thoughts on the episode to have uh, a moment where they make a decision um and it ends off just being a standard cartoon ending it's a weird show sometimes the bad batch you know where we talk about it like the big two-parter that we talked about a few weeks ago where that feels like andor for kids or andor for the audience who's followed the clone wars all the way through to the bad batch you know it was a, a much more adult show much more much bigger concepts and then other times you have to let them away with being a kid's show, a kid's animation. You know, this is this episode was unbalanced for me, or these two episodes actually, uh, because it's almost a two-parter, were unbalanced for me. They didn't get the right balance that the Bad Batch strikes very often. The Clone Wars had episodes that, that were absolutely directed at kids as well, but I do feel you need the momentum. If you're going to do a 16-episode series, you need the momentum to push the characters into places where they're going, their journey, their their concepts, and really what they've done is they've taken out the only active character in Echo, moved him off on his own mission, which would probably be really enjoyable to watch, and had the Bad Batch here just spinning the wheels, um, getting their ship back to go back and probably get another mission from Sid. So I really do hope that next week we have a moment where they finally confront Sid and say, we saved you many times, you don't have our back. You weren't willing to save us. We had to get ourselves out of the situation. Our relationship's done. Now we're off to save people. I hope that that is how next week's episode goes or the week after. But I feel like this episode had a choice and didn't even make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, yeah. even just the threat of the coalescing empire with the stormtroopers, you know, after that episode eight. And I mean, even, you know, from the earlier episodes were the the realization from higher up that the bad batch is still out there so that you know even uh crosser informing his new superior actually mm-hmm. they're still alive you know th- there's so much here um that seemingly is kind of just being filed for the yeah. time being and then it gets rolled out in one of the, in in the two big sort of double headers mm-hmm. and it's like it needs to permeate a bit more Just a because bit, at the moment you wouldn't even think that this galaxy had a rising empire. I mean, this is a mine for a really important ore, yeah. yet you don't have the empire coming in. I mean, or having a station there already, certainly given it's seemingly a good quality kind of ore and it was part of the techno union mm-hmm. uh, previously, which yeah. would have been the enemies. They would have defeated them. Yeah, and this is a resource like we see on Kashyyyk. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, because otherwise we're again to like you say, it's 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 just a little bit um kind of dissociated yeah. from the bigger stuff. It can still be mission of the week, but with something that keeps yeah. that threat. The momentum activity alive. Absolutely. Like, wouldn't it have been great if they'd said that the reason why the Marcos profits were increasing over and over again is because now. 
the Galactic Republic needs this ore. Like, if there yeah. was just even a nod to yeah. that, oh, I found this, he's making more transactions with the Galactic Republic. But I don't want to be overly negative. It is still a fun show to watch. Um, the moments with the moment with Hunter doing the uh, Mission Impossible uh, was really cool. And I, I have to say, the, the moment with Echo where she trusts so much in her, the rest of the batch that she jumps off to her p- potential death, taking the droid with her, I thought was a really good scene, really well laid out. Yeah. So there are some positives in there. It's a good episode, definitely better than last week's, and hopefully uh, we'll see a more connected story next week because we are in the latter third of this season and we uh, we need to see a bit more momentum from where the batch are going and who they are in this galaxy. Excellent stuff. John, what's your final thoughts on this episode? Yeah, I, I preferred this to last last week's episode as well. I'd give this uh, three gonkies gonking out of five. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed that Gonky was involved here, even though he didn't know it. Um, I really liked Benny. Uh, I thought it was a great character mm-hmm. um, being introduced here. And I, yeah, you kind of want to see him come back at least i do yeah. um i i love the whole emphasis of of this um but again i just feel it's getting a little bit detached from yeah. um sort of the big the bigger set pieces that are there which are effectively what's happening you yeah. know in in the wider context and that that needs to be brought in yeah. and i think uh you know i can't add anything more than what derek has said around that ending it it's and I think there's a real, that's where the Bad Batch has always done so well, like the Clone yeah. Wars or Rebels, just mm. the infusion of these, you know, like Pixar, uh, the infusion of adult stuff with kids stuff. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. And that basically everyone likes. And I just feel these are too detached from that and mm-hmm. a little bit disjointed. Yeah. And I mean, I think if, it is the tipping point, which is, you know, the effectively the penultimate episode before the double header ending is the moment where they do it. Then that's a lot of episodes of just doing mission of the week. Well, yeah. Yeah. How about yourself, Chris? What, uh, what's your final thoughts on the episode? I don't have much more to kind of add outside mm-hmm. of you guys. Again, I, I'm very much a fan of the show. Just, I think I'm slightly more critical of the last two episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, exactly. And I think it's just, because I think, and we're critical, I think, because we know the potential and we've seen exactly. the potential across. So hoping that this is just a small um, kind of hiccup, if you want to call it that, after two amazing kind of back-to-back episodes, mm-hmm. they just kind of, the writers needed a break, so they phoned it in. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, no, joking. No, no. Um, but I, I think, look, like, it's just, we've said our piece. I think now it's very much... Um, waiting to see where the next couple of episodes go absolutely like i know the big thing i suppose about the clone wars cartoon itself is that in the background there was a war going on between multiple planets so that gives you the ability to do comedy stories kid stories really serious stories big overarching arcs of battles and everything else and it feels like the bad batch now episode 10 of, of season two it feels like what's the overarching story it's the growing empire in the background but we're not even seeing that <laughs> yeah. for for episode on episode. We're not even even feeling that at all. So connect it in. Do a couple of lines that, and you could have easily done it in this episode. We have to make those connections and say there are really bad people in the galaxy, like the Republic that's uh, that's out there. Um, do a bit more, like just a little bit more to tie in with that overarching story so it feels of a part it feels of a whole and it feels a, a reason to justify its existence because as you say john there's a lot of things that have pins in them for, to come back to in future and that's a big failing that happened with the clone wars the clone wars got cancelled remember uh, after season six i think it was and came back four or five years later to finish up the storylines that they'd put a pin in too much so yeah. if you do that with a bad batch and you put a pin in these stories and then they decide you're not getting a season three or a season four then you're suddenly disappointing your audience. So tie it all in, give it a bit more motivation, and then we can have a a, a great story in the Bad Batch. And exactly. as you say, it, but it, it's also the evolution of the Bad Batch because it's even just that self-reflection of Hunter. You know, well, where are we now? We've lost Echo. Because, I mean, they started off as an elite member of the clones, uh-huh. um, a, an elite unit of the clones, Unit 99. Mm-hmm. Now they're effectively being an unreliable um, yeah. carrier or courier for, for Sid. Yeah. Um, and 
I think that's the issue is you need to get them. It's not just the, the growing uh, or nascent galactic empire forming in, in this galaxy, but the nascent rebellion. And that's yeah. where they need to be hitched be to yeah. much yeah. more. Um, it would be great. Uh, just, much, at least nods to it. Yeah. Like just much more uh, sort of explicitly. And certainly when we're having those conversations about, and Dave Filoni is mentioning, you know, the bearded guy in Return of the Jedi can be seen as, you know, Rex or an ex-clone because yeah. they joined. And so I, I, I think that would just be really useful to, to, to do, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Well, let's pop on over to some feedback to hear what our fellow Batchers thought of last week's episode. And we do have some feedback on last week's episode, episode 209. First up, we got an email in from Nicole, who says, Hey guys, first of all, I really like the podcast and tuning in every week. It's only in the last few years that I've become a more devoted Star Wars fan. After The Mandalorian Season 2, I decided to watch everything in order, including all the animated series, which I really thought I would struggle with. That was not the case, and actually I find the animated series to be my favourite Star Wars. I think the stories that Clone Wars provided really added to and enhanced the prequel trilogy. I feel animation works in ways that movies or live-action series just can't. The character development that can happen enriches the stories and the characters. Seeing the slow descent of Anakin to the dark side made you sympathise with his character and made his turn on the dark side all the more believable than the movies portrayed. It made the movies even better. As you've said before, Ahsoka's character grew so much from this very unlikable Padawan to a character beloved by so many. Ezra in Season 1 of Rebels was practically insufferable, but I sobbed when he left with Thrawn and the Purgil. You guys are pretty positive in comparison to some, but I've seen so much negativity on the Mission of the Week episodes. I think people may just be forgetting that this is not a get-all-the-action-at-once kind of series like Mando or Obi-Wan has to be. All these one-off adventures play into the greater story. You've pointed out that they failed all these missions, and I think that's on purpose. They're not good at them, because they're not supposed to be. They are meant for more, and in my opinion, their unhappiness and failure is all leading down the road to their greater purpose. They aren't happy for most of this season, but Echo is the only one to voice that. They just look so bored. Wreckers is asleep before the transmission from Rex in Truth and Consequences, but technically they succeeded in that mission. This week's episode is a stark contrast to last week's on purpose. It's going to help them all see where they actually want and need to be. That, for me, makes seeing this show, even the missions of the week, all the more enjoyable. Nicole. Good stuff, Nicole. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Nicole. Yeah, I really like the point of view here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, uh, you know, because I think discussing them um, week in and week out, I think... You can get into that rhythm or your own trench of just saying, oh, mission of the week. But, Mm. and I mean, we have discussed, I think we were saying we just wanted it to be a bit sooner, but you're right as well. You know, these are 16 episodes, not six. So there's 10 episodes there. Mm -hmm. So I think you're absolutely spot on. It isn't get all the action at once. And I I, I agree that, you know, Clone Wars, Rebels, and indeed Bad Batch, they are adding layers and depth because they have so many episodes to the movies as well and mm-hmm. um, so i think um you know i absolutely can see where you're coming from around this that you know it is all moving to um where they need to be yeah. uh, like you say you know leading them to that road to their greater purpose mm-hmm. because of this unhappiness and failure and i mean in a lot of cases you know, you know we sometimes forget these guys are soldiers Mm-hmm. And Sid is effectively a trader. She is a, a smuggler, effectively. Yeah. So they're being asked to do stuff, really, that's quite mundane. It's supplying stuff or getting yeah. stuff. But they're, they're good in a... T- as Sid has always said, but they're good in a tight situation because mm-hmm. they've got that military training. Yeah. So it is kind of interesting. I think that's when they get to that military point, such as um from... Episodes seven and eight, mm-hmm. the, the t- double header, you can see that they're much happier in that situation. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, really good stuff, Nicole. Uh, I yeah. really enjoyed your feedback there. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Nicole. And I, I, you're totally right. You know, I, I do think Dave Filoni made it his mission to redeem the prequels in some way or make more sense of them by expanding that world that he created within the Clone Wars yeah. animated show. And that's why we all loved it so much. I, I totally agree with you. I know there is that feeling out there about the Mission of the Week episodes. And I don't think we are as as you say yourself nicole we're not that harsh on the mission of the week episodes i just the the one thing i just 
do call them on occasionally is not taking opportunities to say lines that they should say to connect it a little bit more. I'm absolutely fine with Mission of the Week episodes because we have watched seven seasons of the Clown Wars and, yeah. and we're, we're definitely have, have seen those, uh, those regular episodes, which just expand the characters. You've, you've put it so succinctly here about, about how it will all build to a point. I know obviously Chris not being a viewer of those may have a bit more uh, of a challenge, uh, seeing those episodes, but, but the one thing I will say, I, I suppose with, the Clone Wars, we always had the opening voiceover connecting it into the previous episode or what's going on in the world. And we had an overarching war in the background. So even if the episode was completely standalone, it still felt of a part. And because we haven't seen the entirety of this season, sometimes it feels like we're not getting the overarching piece that they could do with just a drop line here or there. But and um, as, as we always say, all. in Filoni, we trust. Yes, we do. For sure. Yes, we do. Yeah. Great stuff. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Nicole. Over on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash TV podcast industries. We've also got some feedback on our spoiler post. Uh, first up, Russell Hooper says, okay, listening to the podcast, I'm only 10 minutes in, but I've had a thought about Echo. First, I need some background on him. Was he part of the 501st under Anakin and Rex? If so, that may explain why a connection between him and Omega happened. He would have served with a teenage Ahsoka Tano. We may not have seen it on screen, but surely this young woman who was not quite out of childhood had emotional struggles due to stress of the war. Jedi or not, Ahsoka had to, had to feel sadness when a clone she fought alongside died, for example. Also, I'm sure they visited towns and cities ravaged by the war. Echo and his unit had to see broken families with distraught children. Through those types of potential experiences, Echo just might be better equipped to relate to Omega than the rest of Clone Force 99. Just my two cents. Thanks, Russell. Yeah, good thoughts there um, about Echo. I know I, I went back to, to Russell on this. Um, Echo was a member of the 501st, but his major bad experience really was that he was kidnapped and tortured um yeah by uh by one it's of the, the tech techn- it's the techno union the te- yes <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that that's part of his fundamental makeup he had most of the rest of his um group were killed he was the last surviving member and then he went and joined uh clone force 99 so he does have a very different experience than they do um and he's seen the worst side of war as well so yeah, you're right as, he, he he would um have much more of a connection definitely. between between the other characters yeah 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 definitely um i think uh, there's really good points there around that that link between echo and uh omega for sure yeah mm-hmm. good stuff thanks russell uh also on facebook donald dennis says I really feel the team falling apart since they lost Echo. They are getting on each other's nerves more, and they Mm -hmm. all seem pretty frazzled. I never really felt he was the spiritual, emotional core of the team, but it looks like he may have been. Or maybe him leaving made the need for Omega to step up and fill that void in the team so much more apparent. Mm -hmm. Do you think they will get their old shit back? or end up with a new one? And if they do get it back, will they end up as enemies or allies with the folks who stole it from them? If the Bad Batch manage to file a claim for that MacGuffin deposit, they've discovered that mine should fund them for quite a while. Definitely, Donald. Mm. Uh, Yeah, I think they could be um, (laughs) sitting on a huge pile of of money from the Ipsium or uh, for sure... um, they should have, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. All the rest of Donald's questions were answered in episode 10. Yeah, absolutely. They? Yeah, they definitely yeah. were. Um, thankfully, the Marauder is back with them. Exactly. Um, because the Marauder is a cool looking ship, especially in Lego, I, I hasten to add. Mm. Um, maybe a purchase might be coming. <laughs> if you can find one, John. If you can find if one, can exactly. Find one. Um, and yeah, they kind of end off being friends yep. ultimately with the people that stole the ship, or at least yes. um, Benny. The specific person who stole yeah. the ship, not the people who were stealing it for, though. Yeah, Definitely. good stuff. Good stuff. Thanks, Donald. Uh, Victor Von Doom also had some thoughts. He says, Not my favorite episode. Lots of holes in the plot. I can hardly believe Tech did not install security systems on the Marauder or even a droid. Omega became a bit annoying with her whining, but I am reminded she is a young person dealing with loss and sudden changes. I was surprised Hunter did not step in to console her. Yeah. Quite a bit of squabbling amongst the squad as well. They likely miss Echo much more than they're letting on. Tech finally developing some social or maybe parental skills may help in the future. Surely the upcoming episodes will pay off the bleak events of this one. P.S. The Batch needs to plan a separation from Sid post-haste. Definitely, yes. Victor. Um, I think uh, they, they really do. They need to sort of see the the wood for the trees mm-hmm. uh, on, on this one. And I, I think... Um, 
like yourself, yeah, I, I too was surprised that you didn't necessarily see Hunter in there uh, as much. It was, maybe it's just, in in a sense, even though it's more obvious with tech, mm. um, finding it awkward and difficult to, to deal with, um, maybe for Hunter, it's he just doesn't know how to approach it or is dealing with the loss of Echo much more like Omega than, say, Tech is, who is much more objective about it. Even yeah. Though he is also dealing with it just differently. Yeah, absolutely. A really good point that I heard on one of the other podcasts I was listening to about uh, about Star Wars The Bad Batch, that um, something that I didn't even think of was that, uh, effectively, uh, Tech is on the autism spectrum, um, that it's been dealt with really well here in the show, that that's the type of way he's dealing with the yeah. situation that he feels exactly the same way as Omega does about the loss of Echo, but he can't verbalize it. He can't um, deal with it in the same way that she's dealing with it. Yeah. That's not how tech reacts to situations like that. So I thought that was a really interesting thought about, uh, about, about um, tech in the show. Yeah, definitely. Uh, good stuff, Victor. Thanks mm-hmm. uh, so much. Uh, finally, we had final piece of uh, feedback in from Dr. Bob Phillips, who says, thought we were back in the land of Mando with the Western music mm. and the grandest of canyons. Nicely set up with the mission failure also leading to the dilemma. And the sitting by the pool with tech describing how emotions can be felt differently when you're wired unlike others was beautiful. Mm. Ending on a cliffhanger. A uh, good switch of gear for the series with the batch maybe beginning to curdle after Sid sours their separating cream. <laughs> P.S. That is where I've heard of Ipsium before. Thank you, John. All those templates from the turn of the millennium. Uh, absolutely. Um, the only reason I know it is because our corporate branding has all the Ipsum templates. Uh, font gobbledygook in the paragraph <laughs> show so whenever you've got to deal with one it's like there's ipsum font going on yes nightmare scenario but coming back to your comments um mm-hmm. i i think uh you know really good point around the switch of gear i love how you've described that there about the batch maybe beginning to curdle with uh sourpuss uh sid there and um, <laughs> i think Yes, for sure. I think it's probably a temporary curdle. The chef will save it somehow, I guess. I think the saving of it might be chopping their way away from away from Sid. Definitely. Uh, I think I think that's got to be the got to be the move here. Yes, carving away from Sid. <laughs> you can tell we're hungry, can't yeah, you? Yeah, blitzing away from <laughs> Sid, maybe. That's much um, better. Yes. Yeah, whisking away from <laughs> Sid. Also very good. Yes, job. Exactly. <laughs> Great stuff. Thanks so much for all your feedback for the episode. You can, you can send your emails into us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or pop on over to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tvpodcastindustries where there is a spoiler post for each of the episodes as they come out. Yes, good stuff. Thanks, everyone, and thanks, Bob, uh, for the feedback. If you like what you hear and you like what you've been listening to over this season, why not head on over to patreon.com slash TV Podcast Energies, where for any galactic amount on an ongoing basis, you can support us, or if you want to keep us in caffeine or keep our illustrious editor and producer Derek in caffeine as he toils away the wee hours uh, on our multiple shows going on right now. Mm-hmm. You can head on over to buymeacoffee.com slash TVPI. Yes, because we are doing multiple shows. Yes. We are covering The Bad Batch. We are covering Star Trek Picard, the other star in the verses. Star Wars for Star Trek. We're doing both of them at the same time because we are that unique and that kind of bendy. But we're also covering the amazing Last of Us over on HBO. Mm -hmm. And we will have recently covered, if you look back, yes, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. I hope so. I hope we'll have gotten to the cinema to go and see that uh, before this episode comes out. But yes, lots and lots of podcasts out there. Thanks so much to everybody for your support and for listening along with us on TV Podcast Industries. We'll be back next week with our chat about Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 2, Episode 11, Metamorphosis. Uh, Looking forward to, uh, to that on March 1st. Yes. Thank you so much for listening and we will speak to you very soon. Yes, thank you so much, fellow Batchers, for joining us for episode 10. Uh, Before next week, remember, keep watching, keep listening, and keep being dastardly. Bye.